am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, today we're going to talk about another pick, and this is going to be Pete Buttigieg. So I think that he might be one of the top ones, and I'm going to tell you, I think Pete Buttigieg is the guy that most Americans think they don't know, but if you show them any of the pictures that you're going to see in today's video, they'd say, oh yeah, that guy, I know him. So it's pretty interesting. Anyway, I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video, and if you haven't subscribed, please, you know, I can just keep asking, just please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So, yeah, Pete Buttigieg. I think uh, a lot of people don't realize how recognizable he's been, and I think he's just been a perfect promoter for, I think this has always been his goal since he was in high school. I really do. Uh, at, at the very least, to be mayor of his hometown. And, it, and then it just kept going after that. But I'll tell you a little bit about him. It's just a short page. I don't know. Th there's too much to tell you, so this is some real basic stuff. Now, his actual full name is Peter Paul Montgomery Buttigieg, and he was born on January 19th, uh, 1982, and he's a formal naval officer and the 19th United States Secretary of Transportation. So, he was the 32nd mayor of South Bend, Indiana from 2012 to 2020. He had been reelected and known as Mayor Pete uh, across the country, actually. Now, Buttigieg graduated from Harvard and, and Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar, in 2007. Then he worked at um, a firm called McKinsey and Company from 2009 to 2017 where he worked on energy, retail, and economic development. Very interesting because it's a perfect resume for the job he's got now as Transportation Secretary. Then he worked as a Lieutenant uh, Naval Intelligence Officer including seven months in the war in Afghanistan. And then famously he was the two-time Mayor of South Bend, Indiana where he came out as gay in 2015 and he married a uh, Chasten Glesman who is uh, he's a school teacher and a writer and they married in 2018 they adopted infant twins one of which had very serious uh, health issues and hospitalizations now Buttigieg ran in the 2020 Democratic Party as the uh, in the you know in the presidential primaries he didn't make it but he was the first openly gay man to do so and he was also the youngest person to serve as secretary of transportation He's the only child of Jennifer Ann Montgomery, and his parents are so, um, you know, well uh, uh, bred. He's uh, the only child of Jennifer Ann Montgomery, and uh, it was her last name, and Joseph Anthony Buttigieg II, and he was who, and uh, Pete, Pete Buttigieg was actually born in South Bend, Indiana. His uh, parents met and married while employed at uh, as faculty at New uh, Mexico State University. His father was born in Hamron, Malta, where they speak an Arabic uh, dialect uh, called Malti. And, um, and at the age of 32, his father immigrated to the United States to pursue his doctorate. And then um, the dad was prof a professor of English, interestingly enough, at the University of Notre Dame and um, south, uh, near South Bend. And Buttigieg's mother also taught at the University of Notre Dame for 29 years. And his father was a translator and editor of a three-volume English edition of the of a three-volume English edition of philosopher Antonio Gramsci. No idea who that is. Uh, called Prison Notes and uh, influenced Pete's pursuit of literature in college. Uh, he majored in history and literature. And there's just more. I mean, you can just talk forever about Pete Buttigieg. His stories out there. So now we'll do the cards. All right, so we're gonna use the Visa Versa tarot cards. And uh, like I always say, I'll tell you more about these cards at the end of the video. There's a little clip back there that uh, gives you some information on these. But right now what I'll say to you is that they're weird to use because they've got pictures on both sides. It's kind of a, and the idea that it's a coming and going of tarot or a before and after or a here and now, I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe. So, um, just to remind you what it means is that so there's there's a little uh, embellishment at the bottom here and if it's on the right hand side then this 
image will look as if it's facing you or coming at you. Okay, so it's so that gives you one aspect of what it of what it is. But if it, the embellishment is on the left hand side, then the image is often facing away from you, and is uh, so that gives you an idea of, of how you might interpret that. And it's not really a good and a bad. It's just different. I think of it more of a coming and a going kind of an image, and each car card is interesting. So the hard thing is to use them and not kind of pre interpret it because you obviously know what this card is because you can see it it's just going to be another version of this card on the other side so so at first i was really it was hard to use these but after i just got used to it then uh, i don't even look at the uh at the image really so pete Buttigieg, kamala harris is he seriously on her radar because he doesn't bring any particular group with him and you think that's what she's looking for so pete blue judge for kamala harris let's see what um oh but you know before we do anything let's have just a moment of course of meditation So, good old Pete, and uh, as, you, as it relates to Kamala Harris's impression of Pete, um, is he, for Kamala Harris, a, a, you know, a serious contender for that second spot? In other words, in her brain, is she going, oh yeah, he, um, he, we'll see if he can do it. He would be good. He might be one of the ones I pick. Or, in her brain, is, has she already dismissed him as a choice? You know, I think I'm going to adjust this uh, camera up a little bit. Yeah. So, how does he, how does he look to her? Three cards. One, two, and three. So three cards. How does Pete look to Kamala as a candidate? So the first card up. So this is a knight. This is the Knight of Wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. Knight is a fighter, you know, for the royal court, and uh, so it's a strong card to get. So he looks to her, to Kamala. He looks like a knight. Actions, plans. A knight of now. Are those actions and plans? Um, selfish that he has or are they good action plans for the country are they actions and plans that she agrees with i don't know but it's a strong figure and even if you didn't agree with some of the things he was thinking about you might appreciate him having a strong conviction for them okay number two then is actually the four of wands and we've gotten this on maybe every candidate that i've picked so far i think um at least Three, but uh, the four of wands, wands are actions, plans, forward movement, and the four of wands are smallish celebrations. And you see in this picture, you've got a man and a woman, so this could be Kamala and Pete. Um, so how does she look to him? She looks to him in a that she can move things in a positive way, in a winning way. And then the last card is the is this the king or the queen of cups? I'm gonna look at the other side just to get a look at the face and the figure. I think this is a man. So this is the King of Cups, very significant, because um, uh, cups are emotion, by the way, uh, you know, passionate, uh, and so and this king is sitting on an ocean of emotion. He's got a beautiful, hope you can see it, a really beautiful depiction of a dolphin right here. Here's his eye. This is his beak, and this is a smooth dolphin. And I got to tell you, being from Florida, I really love to see dolphins because you do have an. Uh, a very uh, a nice opportunity to see them without too much trouble here. Just going out to the beach, you can see them swimming around. So, um, yeah, so this king is, um, this is all good. So he's on her radar. Fighter, smallish celebrations, king of emotion, which would be something that would be good to use uh, in a candidacy. All right, so we think he's on her radar in a positive uh, way. Okay, Pete Buttigieg. Now, let's just say is he in the top five. Is Pete in Kamala's top five? Because she has to start to cull that list. There might have been some 
that were never going to be serious for her. But uh, three cards is he in Pete Buttigieg and Kamala's top five. Let's see. It's Pete and Kamala's top five. Um, so we come up here with the Seven of Swords, which is an abuse of power. So Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules of Law. This is a strong uh, indicator of an abuse of power. And, uh, and you have here actually a skull. I hope you can see it right here with like a helmet on. And uh, this guy, is. there's two of the uh, Truth, Justice uh, stuck in the ground here and Rules of Law. And this guy is making off with some of that. So does he make it into the top five? Well, you know, what's interesting about this, as a matter of fact, is there are five swords that are moving on somewhere. One, two, three, four, five. And there's two swords that have been left in hand. So that's five, six, seven. And there's one right here on the ground. So a uh, dead head, eight. So these could be the three that was, were off her list right away. There was one, never was gonna, you know, his strong resume, probably, you know, strong, strongish, but he, he was never gonna do it. Then these other two, no, they're, they've left. And this person is trying to sneak off forward with uh, the five left choices. Okay, I'm gonna change my interpretation and say, yeah, he's in the five. The next one is the seven of cups, which is illusion and delusion. So this just means that, you know, there is plenty of emotional you know, conjuring. And look, you've got a female figure here in the center of all of that illusion and delusion. Those cups are just up in the air. Is he in the top five? I think he is. And then the final one here with this four of cups is uh, this is making a decision about something that you don't necessarily want. You can see there are four cups that are tipped, uh, tipped over actually in the uh, in this emotional, in this river that's passing by. And this person is just sat here looking uh, at this and thinking, ah. Oh. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. I was gonna say that this card could be Pete Buttigieg looking at what he's missed because typically the Four of Cups is something that you don't particularly want. But you know, I'm wondering if this is, it, it does kind of say the same thing. This person doesn't look happy that all these cups are gone. Um, but he has to accept that. The one thing about this cup is that we see a little, some life crawling out of it. We see a little crab escaping from that uh, cup. So I think these are the other four candidates and he might be the one that she picks. But I only want to know if he was in the top uh, five. And this, for me, this kind of says in a number of ways that he is. Ah, oh, nice, and three. So he's gonna be in the top three because I think it has to go down to three or at five candidates, could you pick one out already? in your mind and say, I know who it's gonna be right now. But if we had to go to three, because I guess if you're gonna make an invitation, you have to make more than one invitation. Don't you think? You'd have to make at least three. Uh, if Kamala had to make an invitation to be with her on the ticket, she'd have to set it to at least three, I think. Perhaps, I mean, maybe just very decisively one, but. So three cards uh, is he in, is Pete Buttigieg judging Kamala's uh, top three. Interesting. Is he in her top three? Okay, so the first card up is a broken heart. It's three swords. Three swords stabbed into that heart, but it's a broken heart. The next one up is the five of uh, swords. Swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. The five of swords is a... Uh, uh, this is an abuse of power. This, this, the seven of swords that was earlier is a theft and betrayal. And so that person is sneaking off with five of those swords of truth, justice, rules, and law and calling that theft and betrayal. I'm not sure how that figures in, but I just wanted to throw that in there because now bringing up this five of swords, it reminds me that this is an abuse of power. Um, so we've got five swords. This person has one in their hand, two over their shoulder, and two on the ground. So of those five swords, two are done with. There's three swords left. One is a definite, one is a helper even. This is steadying him. And these other two are like extra being taken along. Is it Pete? And then the last card here is the page of value. A coin, page of coins. And coins are value or money, but this coin, I wonder if she doesn't think he brings enough vote 
value. Some other choices could bring maybe along a, a significant constituency, and Pete Buttigieg doesn't have a consistency, so his value you know, it may, in her mind, be somewhat diminished. Uh, but I think maybe he's in the top three. Okay, so now we're just going to ask the question, is it going to be Buddha Judge? I don't think any of the previous ones were very clear that it was going to be them. So is it going to be, is he going to be the one to run with her? I mean, if people aren't thinking about him, they only need to watch a few of his um, announcements on television or the things that he's appeared in to say, oh, wow, this guy extemporaneously can speak about anything in a very, really, very serious way. Three cards, is it going to be Pete? Is it going to be Pete? We'll see. All our life with this season. So, ah, uh, so this is, uh, yeah, a perfect pairing. This is the lover's card. Um, this is a seven of wands. So out of seven candidates, this one is standing uh, with an, an action and the others are, are knocked down in this because usually these wands look as if they're being poked out, but these look like they've been laid down in front of this candidate. Is it gonna be Pete? And look at this, this knight of wands. So all wands, Pete is a man of action. Perfect pairing, the lover's card. Um, uh, only one standing with an action left and uh, being a fighter and uh, also showing up as a knight of wands. I think maybe it could be Pete. Huh. Who'd have thunk? Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So these are Los Scarabio cards. This is the Visa Versa Tarot. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the folks who have this idea have some difficult names, but I'm going to try to get through it. So Massimiliano... Filadoro, Lunea, Weatherstone, and the artwork by David Corsi. So nice, nice, nice cards. They've got that cool kind of magnetic clasp that's really neat to get. The box, if you gave it as a gift or if you received it, you think, wow, this was a very thoughtful gift. They've got all these nice little pulls that you can unpack everything easily with. And the uh, guidebook is a color guidebook, easy to read. Um, and lots of thought and intention into these uh, suggestions for the divinations that you can use. Um, the cards, again, have this nice little pull that you can get them out of the box with. But what I really love about these cards, well, it intimidated me for a long time, actually, is that there's no front and there's no back. There's a this side, which is indicated by the little embellishment on the right-hand side of the, of the card, and then there's a that side, which is in, indicated by a little embellishment embellishment on the left side of the card. So you kind of get the idea that this is um, um, the, and there's no right and there's no wrong, there's no good and there's no bad. It's just that um, a different um, view on how to divine this card when it comes up. So the problem with them is that when you're shuffling them, you know, you know, once you've dealt your cards, you know what's going to be on the other side because, you know, it's there. So, you know, you're going to know that this is a uh, King of Cups uh, right away. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, if you can divert that from your mind, the cards are beautiful. And uh, so you see that the artwork goes right to the edge. Um, they give you nice hints uh, on the cards as to how they, uh, what they are, because so, sometimes that can be an issue when you're trying to figure out uh, how to use these cards. And it doesn't matter which way you put them out, because there's a this and a that side, and uh, you've got uh, work, things to work with. So it's almost like you're getting two decks of cards in one. And uh, it used to intimidate me, but now I love using these cards. And uh, they're glossy, they're easy to use, they slide off of each other, but not too in a bad way. And um, I like to spread them out like this so that, uh, or if I have a reading for someone, let them spread them out so that people kind of get their energy into the cards. And so this is the this and that, uh, vice versa tarot. And uh, I love them.